Good evening. Welcome to this second presidential debate. The audience here in the hall has agreed to be polite and attentive, no cheering or outbursts. Those of you at home, of course, are not so constrained. Gentlemen. We want to get underway immediately if we can. We still don't know where the bottom is at this time. Tom, thank you. We are in the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. A final verdict on the failed economic policies of the last eight years, promoted by uh, President Bush, supported by Senator McCain. Senator McCain. Thank you, Tom. Senator Obama, it's good to be with you at a town hall meeting. And, uh, Alan, it's our job to fix the problem. Fixing our economy. I know how to do that, my friends. I know how to get America working again. Hank Paulson says he won't stay on. Who do you have in mind to appoint to that very important post? Not you, Tom. <laughs> with good reason. Uh, Senator Obama, who do you have in mind for Treasury Secretary? Well, uh, Senator Obama, thank you very much. May I remind both of you, if I can, that we're operating under rules that you signed off on. And when we have a discussion, it really is to be confined within about a minute or so. Oliver Clark. Oliver? Through this bailout package, I was wondering what it is that's going to actually help those people out. That's an excellent question. The greed and excess in Washington and Wall Street. I left my campaign and suspended it. Fix this. We've got to stop this greed and excess. We can fix our economy. Americans, workers are the best in the world. They're the fundamental aspect of America's economy. They're the best, uh, they're most, at best, we're the best, they're the best. They are the best workers in the world. We can do it. Thank you, Senator McCain. I have fought against excessive spending and outrageous. I have fought to reduce the earmarks. We were working to eliminate these pork barrel earmarks. He voted for nearly a billion dollars in pork barrel earmark projects, including, by the way, three million dollars for an overhead projector at a planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. My friends, I know how to fix this economy. We've run out of time. We have this one, one minute discussion period going on here. My friends, we're going to have to sit down across the table, Republican and Democrat, as he did in 1983 between Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill. I know how to do that. My friends. I'm trying to play by the rules that you all established. One minute for discussion. We can do it. Now, when JFK said, we're going to the moon in 10 years, nobody was sure how to do it, but we understood that if. Gentlemen, uh, I want to just remind you one more time about time. We're going to have a larger deficit than the federal government does if we don't get this under control here before too long. Senator McCain, for you, we have our first question from the Internet tonight. What sacrifices, sacrifices will you ask every American to make to help restore the American dream and to get out of the economic morass that we're now in? We have to eliminate the earmarks, the overhead projector that Senator Obama asked for, shoving earmarks. We are Americans. We can get them all done because that's what America's been doing. A lot of you remember uh, the tragedy of 9-11. Very quickly. Senator McCain has, has you know, been uh, talking tough about earmarks. Senator McCain. You know, nailing down Senator Obama's various tax proposals is like nailing jello to the wall. He wants to raise taxes. My friends, the last president to raise taxes during tough economic times was Herbert Hoover. Senator Obama's secret that you don't know is that his tax increases will increase taxes. I got some news, Senator Obama. The news is bad. Uh, we have another question from the Internet. Uh, Tom, uh, can I respond to this briefly? Because well, I, it, look, so guys, the rules were established by the two campaigns. We worked very hard on this. Right. Since the rules are pretty loose here, I'm going to add my own to this one. Would you give Congress a date certain to reform Social Security and Medicare? I can't guarantee. Senator McCain, I think you know, the, the straight talk express loss of wheel on that one. Let's be clear about... My tax plan and Senator McCain's. Senator McCain, two years for reform sure. of entitlement hey, programs? I'll, I'll answer the question. <laughs> look, look, it's not that hard to fix Social Security, Tom. Social Security's not that tough. We know what the problems are, my friends, and we know what the fixes are. Our wonderful Ronald Reagan, the conservative from California, and the liberal Democrat, Tip O'Neill, that's what we need more of. So let's have, and let's have the American people say, fix it for us and then listen to my vision for the future of America. I'm going to stick by my part of the pack and not ask a follow up here. <laughs> now how what's what's the best way of fixing it? Nuclear power. Senator Obama says that it has to be safe or disposable or something like that. Look, I've I was on navy ships that had nuclear power plants. We can do that. We as Americans because we're the best. The computer was originally 
invented by... Uh, gentlemen, uh, you may not have noticed, but we have whites around here. <laughs> and they have... They have red and right. green and yellow, and they are at a signal. Tell you to what, I'm just trying to keep up with John. Tell you right what, I know. Okay, you know, here, tell John. You what, Tom, wave, wave like that, we, and I'll look at you. All right, sir. Okay. Uh, By the way, my friends, I, I know you grow a little weary of this back and forth. It was an energy bill on the floor of the Senate, loaded down with goodies. You know who voted for it? Might never know. That one. You know who voted against it? Me. All kinds of goodies. And I'll stop, Tommy, and you didn't even weigh it. Thanks. All right, thank you very much, Senator. One hand giveth. The other hand, taketh away. He'll impose mandates. Senator Obama will fine you. Will fine you. That's remarkable. If you're a parent, Senator Obama will fine you. All those people will be covered except for those who have these gold-plated Cadillac kinds of policies. You know, like hair transplants. I might need one of those myself. But the point is, you're going to get fined. And by the way, Senator Obama has never mentioned how much that fine might be. Perhaps we might find that out tonight. Well, why don't, we, why don't let's talk about this, Tom, because there, there was just a lot of stuff out there. Perfectly right think, and responsibility. Well, start with I, I think it should be a right. Senator, uh, we want to move on now. Before we, we leave that, did we hear the size of the fine? <laughs> <laughs> he does not understand our national security challenges, my friend. Senator Obama? Uh, it's true. There are some things I don't understand. I don't understand how... We ended up invading a country that had nothing to do with 9-11, while Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda are setting up base camps and safe havens to train terrorists to attack us. That was Senator McCain's judgment, and it was the wrong judgment. My friends, if we had done what Senator Obama wanted done in Iraq, then we would have had a wider war. We would have been back, my friends. The United States of America, Tom is the greatest force for good, as I said. But it also has to be tempered with our ability to beneficially affect the situation. That requires a cool hand at the tiller. This requires a person who understands what are the limits of our capability are. President Reagan, my hero, wow. my hero is a guy named Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt used to say, walk softly, talk softly, but carry a big stick. Senator Obama likes to talk loudly. He said he wants to announce that he's going to attack Pakistan. Remarkable. You know, if you are... Tom, Senator just, McCain, just, a, just, just a quick follow-up on this. I, I think... If we're going to have follow-ups, then I will want follow-ups. No, no, no I know. Well. That was, so, uh, I think so we'll get at me. it if I can with, with this question. Be fine with me. Uh, uh, if let's I can. have one. All right, let's Come have on. a follow-up. I'm just a hired health here, so I mean... <laughs> You're doing a great job, Tom. <laughs> Nobody called for the invasion of Pakistan. Now, Senator McCain suggests that somehow, you know, I'm green behind the ears and, you know, I'm just spouting off and he's somber and responsible. I, Thank Senator, you very much. <laughs> Senator McCain, this is the guy who sang Bomb, Bomb, Bomb Iran, who called for the annihilation of North Korea. Not true. Not true. But the point is, that I know how to handle these, these, these Senator Obama by saying that he would attack Pakistan. I'll get Osama bin Laden, my friends. I'll get him. I know how to get him. I'll get him no matter what. And I know how to do it. He, he will still not admit that he was wrong about the strategy of the surge in Iraq. We've got to show moral support for Georgia. Georgia, a tiny country and a tiny, tiny democracy. Russia is a challenge. Senator Obama? We're winding down, so if we can keep track of the time. Well, uh, all right, we're going to try to get in two more questions if we can, so we have to move on. Gentlemen, we've come to the last question, and you'll both be interested to know, this comes from the Internet. It has a certain zen-like quality. I'll give you a fair warning. What don't you know, and how will you learn it? I think what I don't know is what all of us don't know. And that's what's going to happen. We will be talking about countries sometime in the future that we hardly know where they are on the map, some Americans. What I don't know is what the unexpected will be. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much, Senator McCain. That concludes tonight's debate. We want to thank our host here at Belmont University in Nashville and the Commission on Presidential Debates. And you're in my way of my script there, if you will move. <laughs> In addition to everything else, good night everyone from Nashville.